Right. Hi, Pat. My name is Pete Wissart. Pete, really a pleasure. A pleasure to meet you. It's my I'm, pleasure. I'm here on behalf of Justin Sardico, who unfortunately couldn't make it today. Oh, please um, give Justin my best. Yeah, I will do. And so, talking about a bit about you as a, a musician and your background and where you've come from and all those kind of things, um, and discussing uh, how you've kind of grown as a musician over the years. So, how did you start playing? What was the sort of inspiration to kick off on the guitar? Very similar to... Um, the inspiration that I got from playing with all the other toys that I, I was experiencing as a child, from childhood. Yeah. The guitar was just another toy. Yeah. And of all the toys that uh, I enjoyed and that provided imagination, the guitar continuously did so. And it never ended until this very day. It still provides, it amplifies my curiosity. So every day you pick up the guitar, it's a I play challenge. with it when I, when I, and I don't practice it, I play it. I play with it. Yeah. It's a toy, it's my favorite toy. Yeah. Mm. I heard you talk earlier, actually, you mentioned practicing. You, you made an analogy to driving a car. I wondered if you'd sort of explain how you see practice, because that was quite an interesting analogy you drew. Well, I, I think that, you know, I think that um, familiarity with anything gives us more insight on, on any of these things. Practicing, in a sense, especially with musicians in general, a lot of musicians really find it to be a responsibility to practice every day a certain number of hours. And I think on the basis of material that a curriculum may have educationally, if you're going to a conservatory, I, I think that demand is a necessity for just for accuracy. Mm. Uh, but Physical on the other control. hand, yeah, for, for greater control and, and constant uh, touch with a, a social topic, mm -hmm. which is the craft of music, mm -hmm. at music as a craft. So that demands uh, practice. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, I, I didn't experience music in that way. I, I experienced music being self-taught and self-contained. And whatever I gained more uh, ability with came through excitement by being exposed on things coming in from the outside. Mm -hmm. When I heard Wes Montgomery, for instance, mm. I, for the first time, or any of the players, Les Paul and Johnny Smith, um, when I heard Wes for the first time, I was uh, bombarded with a certain kind of music that had vibrations of its own. It was unique. And it really stimulated me, mm. and I became basically, and for a short period of time, addicted to it. In doing so, I exposed myself to it constantly. I played records of it over and over and over and over. Yeah. And I absorbed what I was exposed to. And I've come to the conclusion that um, consonance and dissonance, you know, consonance is balanced, mm -hmm. dissonance is, represents misbalance. Uh, sharp. It's the difference between a curve or a point, mm. you know. Uh, I've come to find that the more I'm exposed to something, at a very early age I, I noticed, the more I was exposed to what was consonant or blended with a, a pure and clean melody, the more dissonant it became because I started being be, being bored of it, mm. too much of it. It's over familiar, almost. Yeah. Over kind of. And I also noticed that the more dissonant, when I was exposed to something dissonant, the more I was exposed to it, the more consonant it became. Yeah. My ears began to hear more about it. So it, it, I stepped back objectively and looked at both of them simultaneously, and found them to be one and the same, mm. as an illusion. And that's what I began to study. And that's your own, but that's formed your own sort of direction. Yes, of my study. conclusions came from <clears throat> uh, the practicality of studying something broader in context than just one of the crafts that came from its application mm. to um, creative use. Fantastic. You, you just mentioned just then the, um, the listening to Wes Montgomery over and over and over again. One of the big things that Justin on his website is keen to sort of encourage musicians to do is. In this age of tablature, it's too easy for people to just learn stuff and not to hear the music. Um, so did you transcribe? Did you work out what other people were doing? Or did you, was it less, less? Directed? Well, first and foremost, there, there are two sides to every coin. Like mm -hmm. there is consonance and dissonance. 
uh, there are two ways of transcribing. You can transcribe by the hand and write down yeah. your findings, or you can do so through the ears. I did so through the ears. My transcriptions were, my, my canvas was memory. Right, so you learned the solos. I learned the solos and I, and I absorbed them and memorized those solos. Fantastic. And played them more and more and more until I got tired of it. Yeah, and then yeah. used them as a stepping stone to then start Variations, further. variations of them. Fantastic. To escape addiction to yeah. them. Yeah, fantastic. Because it's very painful.